Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Maloof and welcome back to another episode of City Reach Podcast. Come We're on. so grateful that you guys joined us today. Yes. And wherever you are, I hope things are, are amazing and incredible. Mm -hmm. We love you. We've been praying for you. And thank you for joining us. Yes. One of the things that we say about our podcast is that we'd love for you to do it with someone. Mm -hmm. Call somebody up. Uh, connect with them. Join a small group. Mm -hmm. Do it. We are better together when yes, we do it together. Yes, we are. That's True. It. So um, today, we're going to be answering some questions that came from our marriage conference. And uh, I'm sitting with my wife, Dana Maloof, the Hello, great Dana. Hi. And Pastor Daniel, our executive Hello. pastor. And we're going to be spending some time really just kind of breaking down the mm -hmm. questions from the marriage conference that we didn't get yes. a chance to talk about. Yep. And I think uh, I think it's going to be good because yep. these are real questions in real life. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. Yep. Let's go. Should we jump in? Let's, Let's do in. it. Let's do it. We All have right. a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just to let you know, uh, we had a marriage conference. And um, and so these were some of the questions that we did Q&A for our panel. Yep. And so we just want to jump right in. And this we, did, is, we didn't get to answer no, we all didn't. of them. No, so. we had so many. Thanks yeah. for all your input, guys. It was amazing. And, and just to kind of give context as what we believe God is saying to us, and mm -hmm. this was kind of in a series called Better Together, mm -hmm. we've been spending some time leaning into just that God really has called us to be together. Yes. He's called us to live life together, but the enemy and just life in general, there's so much pressure, but there are ways that God has called us to be able to work out of it. Paul yeah. lays it out in yeah. scripture. We see Paul always connecting relationship with doctrine. He, mm -hmm. he connects, yeah. this is who God is, and then he defines who you are and then how this works out. Yeah. Because he says, listen, when you love me and you love each other, this is what I intended you to live your mm -hmm. life as. Okay. So without any further ado, let's kind of get into the first question. Question, and this is this is the first question: How to steward attraction and love when you don't feel attracted? Mm, so also, great. how to navigate attraction and connection with others, and how to stay faithful in your mind and not compare. Oh, these are loaded. So, the, yeah, this good is, question. This is a really good question as we kind of start off um, mm -hmm. with the first question, really kind of about attraction yeah. and you know, kind of navigating what does that look like? And I just want to throw it over to you, Dana, just kind of yeah, some, some initial so thoughts. Um, just right off the first top of my head, you know, I always think about the choices that we have. Um, you know, forever we're told you don't always feel it, but sometimes you have to choose it. Yeah. And the same thing is with your spouse. It, you know, you don't marry somebody well, hopefully you didn't marry somebody for their good looks because in a while they're going to get old and <laughs> everything, you well, know. Well, it may start with that. It might start with that, but that can't be the foundation. Yeah. And it's just, it's like loving Jesus. <clears throat> Sometimes in life we don't hear him audibly. We don't feel him with us, but we choose every day to know that he loves us. He's for us. He's with us. He promised that he's he there promised, every day. Yes. Yeah. And that's something that we know mm -hmm. beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I think in marriage, it can be that same, mm -hmm. that same way. It's just, it's choosing to believe the best. And when you choose to change your mindset, it's amazing what happens with attraction. Because if all you're thinking about is, I don't like this, I don't like that, this really bothers me, I'm irritated about this. How come he always has to say it like that? Why do you always go do that? All of a sudden, this person who you fell in love with is no longer attractive to yeah. you. They, it's like tainted. But if you start saying, gosh, I love you. I love when you do, you pick the five things. And maybe there's not a lot in the moment. Mm -hmm. But you begin to pick those things. It's amazing how the attraction in your heart, just from your words, can change. It's just like when you're telling Jesus how much you love him. If you're not spending any time with him or yeah. telling him how much you love him, it's hard to go throughout the day and sometimes even think about him. But yeah. when you're consciously making that effort yeah. with Jesus, doing that same exact thing with your spouse, it's amazing how even when you don't feel it, all of a sudden God begins to change your heart because ultimately it's about me. You know, it, it, it stirs a sentence in my, in my head really that it, it doesn't require any spiritual yes. maturity, like zero spiritual mat maturity to find mistakes and find yeah. what's wrong right. in people yeah. and situation. You don't need to be spiritual maturity. It's easy to find right. what's wrong, but it does require spiritual maturity to to look beyond that. And because yeah, it's harder. It's harder. It's and and to, harder. to honor and to yes. see yes. the good things in every situation. It's mm -hmm. like the people of 
of Israel when they they spied the land they they happened to see the problem we have yeah. we have giants here and yeah. that tainted the whole generation it did. Right. and but those who were spiritually mature they saw God's promise mm-hmm. in the middle and they choose that it was mm-hmm. a, and God even said hey you can choose life or death it's right. it's up to you now it's in the power of the tongue it too. is so mm-hmm. it's it's I love what you're saying that it's you know it's a it's a maturity choice to yeah. look for the good and yeah. praise what's good yeah. You, know. you know, what's interesting is that even in James, where he talks about, you know, temptation comes from your own desires, which entice you and drag you away. Mm-hmm. And then these desires give birth to sinful actions. I think, you know, peeling that back a little bit of this is just recognizing what God is, um, he's called you to be a part of. Right. And, and, and then allowing yourself to lean into what God has given you and that appreciation for that, that mm-hmm. thanksgiving that, mm-hmm. and then, and then realizing that this is what God has for me. So therefore there is nothing else that is good as what God has given me. Right. And when you lean into that, that allows you to flourish in that. And then I think the other thing is too, is just on a practical level, I just don't spend time a lot of time with the opposite sex. Yeah. No. That's right? good. I I don't I don't invest in relationship yeah. with right. with an opposite person. So mm-hmm. that would be for me, that mm-hmm. would be another female outside of my wife. Mm-hmm. Like I have connections, but I don't sit and, right. and, and have like coffee with them. Yeah. I don't no. go to lunch with them yeah. on my lunch break. And I think there are just <laughs> practical things that you have to mm-hmm. do in your life. I, mm-hmm. I purposely set my attention and my affection towards my wife. All day long, I'm, I'm either like sending her a text or I'm just sure. saying to myself what I'm thankful for. And mm-hmm. I think wherever your attention goes, that's where your mind is going to be led yeah. by. Yeah. yeah, no, it's so, so good. So Jesus says, set your eyes on the things above. Mm-hmm. And then in Philippians, Paul says, set your mind on that which is pure, yeah. holy, yeah. right. So yeah. in other words, there is this I have to steer my mind. Yeah. Right. And and by the way, there there's going to be for my wife. There's going to be cooler dudes than me. Yeah. There's going to be prettier people than yeah. the person that you married. That, yes. that, that, that that's not the issue. No. The, the, no. Cuz if that's the case and we're always going to be drawn away. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's that I am turning my attention and going she is exactly what I am supposed to have and mm-hmm. be with. And some of it is discipline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of it is just turning my mind and my heart. Choice. And my, Choices. It is. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is yeah. Because not all the time do I wake up in the morning and you look at someone and you're like, oh my God, she's perfect. <laughs> she looks at me and doesn't go, yeah. perfect. We have bad breath. Yes. And yeah. Our hair is a mess and yes. all of it. And it's yeah. almost like you think about when you get married what is the whole sermon about is mm-hmm. to say a big yes. yes like in front right. of god in front of your spouse and in front of your family you say yes to this person mm-hmm. but if we walk around in life and we think that okay now i'm married now i'm saying no to everyone else i meet like right. like that's the focus okay no 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 oh no no like we have that's not what it is no. well but if you're gonna I, do it that way it's not gonna work it's not gonna no. work because if, <laughs> if i have to spend my energy saying no to everyone <laughs> It's almost like those no's are stronger than a yes. Right. But I don't even think about those no's mm-hmm. if my yes is just fed. Like mm-hmm. if I keep feeding my yes to my wife, then the no's are not even there. They, mm. they, they won't steal my attention or my focus right. because I'm, I said yes to, to in my case, Stephanie. Yes. And, and that's my big yes. And that mm-hmm. just overshadows everything else. Right. I love what you say. It's not like... You know, she's not married to the most handsome man on the world. Right. I know that. In my generation, that's Brad Pitt. You know, like it's, it's someone else, you know. It's like, it still is, I yeah, feel like. The yeah, guy's like, like in his 50s and he yeah, still looks we're like, great. We are comparing to <laughs> yeah. always. But, yeah. but, but at the same time, like I know she doesn't have a problem with that because mm-hmm. she said yes to me. Right. Yeah. And, and that, yes, I love that, Dana. Well, and I just think uh, uh, to answer the, la- the last part of this question that people are wondering is how do you do that in your mind? Um, I think it's uh, making a choice, but um, I think it's, you know, the Bible says you take every thought captive, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's allowing your mind to not run away no, that's with good. the imagination or the what ifs. And then honestly, having a, a, a person that you can talk to and someone who's going to also hold you accountable yeah. because 100%. we are better together, yeah. not just better together in your marriage, but better together in your marriage means you have friends who are going to be like, Hey, how come you're talking to that person longer than you should be? Yeah. How come, how come you keep replying to that Facebook, yeah. you know, yeah. like person who keeps responding yeah. to you, you know, it's more, it's more than just saying, 
I set my mind on my husband. No, no, that's or very my practical. Wife. Yeah. There's practical. You know, to sometimes it. us Christians we think that temptation equals <laughs> sin. Right. And, and just because we're tempted by something, we feel kind of ashamed because right. we, we equal that with sin. But we have to remember that the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all, right. like us, mm -hmm. but he never sinned. Right. So temptation is not sin. Right. And the only way to, to you know, avoid sin when temptation comes is to shine light on it, mm -hmm. yes. to have accountability, to yeah. talk yes. to someone and have a culture uh, around you where you know, you admit to temptation because yeah. then light is shining there and you can avoid right. sin. Right. You can deal with, but, but sometimes we're like, oh, I can't, I can't tell anyone I was tempted, you know, with lust when I saw this woman because right. oh, what would they think about right. me? Well, temptation is not sin, mm -hmm. but if we linger on it, it can turn yeah, into that's sin. That's what was James was saying. Yeah. That, it, that, yeah. that, that temptation, if it's allowed to run, yeah. will lead into something. And I, yeah. and something my dad said, and I, a long time ago when I was a young man and he just said, you know, son, one of the ways that I deal with, you know, just beautiful people, you know, especially the opposite sex is he goes, I just recognize that you just shine the light of God on it mm -hmm. and you look at it in a different way. And yeah. he goes, I just started saying, Lord, you make beautiful people. Mm -hmm. I just thank you that there's beautiful people out there. And, and I just, I bless them. And he, and he was like, it just totally diffused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually started applying that when I was a young man. And, you know, you're like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. Or like, well, this person. And I just said, Lord, I just thank you. You make beautiful people. And I bless them. And then it was like mm -hmm. it literally diffused it and it stopped having this like draw. Mm -hmm. And and I think sometimes when we just release it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we just thank him for what, you know, Lord, you, you, mm -hmm. you we're not bringing attention to it in a. Oh my God, say no, say no, say no, say no. And I yeah. love what you said, Daniel. Mm -hmm. It's about the better yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to feed water, explore that yes, yeah. rather than always looking at the nose. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. You know, when you're dealing with your children and you say no to the stove and it's like they're just still attracted yeah. to the stove. Why? Why is this no? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. no, so good. Well, speaking of temptation, yeah. I, I know the next question, Maloof, um, is also something I would love to speak into if, mm -hmm. if we can read. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. I read yeah, yeah. the next question. Someone wrote, um, how can we practice abstinence if uh, my boyfriend and I have fallen and sinned? I know it's you what... You could say boyfriend or girlfriend. Yes, yes. Yeah. This question was just specifically there. So, yeah, if, if you know, you're engaged or you're dating mm -hmm. and you know that you should not have sex, but you did it. What should we know? Why is, why is it so hard? Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, I would like to say uh, about a month ago, we did a podcast on dating and we had actually a couple speaking into this because yeah. they had the same experience mm -hmm. and they, they spoke into, okay, we, we know we should not have done this and here's what we do, did afterwards. So, so please go back and listen if that's your question. Uh, I think it was called something with dating yeah. last month. Yeah. Uh, but let me just say something about it again. Why is it so hard? Well, because God created sex and sex is something beautiful. Yeah. I just want that said yeah. Yeah. because churches sometimes say, you know, that's sin, you know, that's dangerous, yeah. that's, mm -hmm. that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. And all of a sudden we have like, well, I feel really attracted. Why do I feel attracted yeah. to something that's bad? Because in your biology, in the way God created mm -hmm. you, you are created for this. This is a gift. But God also knows it's very fragile and sensitive and, and, and holy and pure and yeah. beautiful. And that yeah. is why he's built the framework of marriage That's and right. the covenant, covenant marriage mm -hmm. yes. to protect that. And that is why when God describes marriage, sex comes last. That this is why a, a man should leave his mother and father and yes. cleave or cling to his wife and they will become one flesh. And that one flesh is talking about now they were naked together and they felt no, no shame, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so now when we have become husband and wife, this is now the gift God has given us yeah. in our so relationships. Good. But it's still in us mm -hmm. as we are dating. It's mm -hmm. still in us. I can just speak from my own personal experience. When I started to date Stephanie, I knew and I can I was 20 but I was a man of God I was serious like I knew I I'm gonna wait to have sex till we're married and and you know I, I know I already made a decision I'm looking forward to it but mm -hmm. it's not gonna be a problem hey and then <laughs> yeah. I'm alone then with this hey. oh my gosh I'm alone with Stephanie she's a lot prettier than and I she thought. is beautiful <laughs> and we alone in my apartment and I mean we actually waited to have sex until we got married both mm -hmm. Stephanie and I we are, we're happy 
happy for that and and I just want that to be our testimony. Yeah. But I remember like the heat and like how attractive we were. And we got to a point when we were making out, we were like cuddling. And now I'm realizing in this moment, if I wait one more minute, right. like there is no turning back. Like I just <laughs> want this yeah. and I want it now. Yeah. And it that didn't matter how what kind of man of God I was. Yes. And so we're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Like we, we actually talked about it and it was just a wake up call. And I just want to speak that into your life. Like don't be, don't be ashamed for that yeah. magnetic attraction because it's real. It is real. So this is what we did. We realized we need guardrails. So now you who wrote this question, you said, well, we already stepped over. Hey, we already failed. No, listen, God is the God of restoration. Yes. God is the God of a, mm -hmm. another chance. And mm -hmm. God can remove the purity. It's not, yeah. okay, you lost your purity. No, no, no. God can restore that. It's yeah. a choice. Yeah. It's something you can aim for now. So yes. here's how you do it. Find accountability. Don't don't try to deal with this mm -hmm. alone, but mm -hmm. find an, a couple that is older than you that is already married and talk to them about yeah, it. Yeah, that's really good. Not yes. just a question here, but go and say, hey, this is what we did and this we need help with this. And they're going to pray with you. They're going to just pray for restoration yeah. and healing yeah. and forgiveness. And you will be you will be back on, on square yes. one. Yeah. I'm just telling you that first. But from now on, it will still be an attraction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so here's what Stefan and I did, and this is what I'm encouraging people to do. Build some guardrails. Mm -hmm. We, in that moment, found, found where, okay, we are too close. If we take one more step, we are going to go for it, right? So we, we just realized we need guardrails that is not even taking us that far. Yeah. Yes. And, and some of them may be, you know, we will not be alone in an apartment. That's right. And we're going to keep the door open. Um, mm -hmm. with someone around <laughs> with someone around uh, Stefan and I did something super practical we, we, we said we won't have any hands where we have our swimwear on summertime so she could not put her hands, you know, where my swim trunks were. <laughs> and she could, I could not put my hands where her bikini was. Like, because that was like, we, we realized that was, the, that was when we crossed the line. Like, yeah. if we continue here, we're going mm -hmm. too far. Right. So, so we, just, we build those guardrails. Those were important for us. Maybe you will have different guardrails, but I mean, try that yeah. at, at least. I don't know if there should be any guardrails. I feel like those are pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, those are pre I'm yeah. just saying because, but, but I don't want you to now, after God restore you, after God, you know, forgive you, you are back on square one. That's don't right. walk with condemnation. Yeah. Don't think that everything That's is really screwed good. and we already did this. So mm -hmm. let's just continue to mm -hmm. do it. No. Now you can be virgins again for your wedding yes, night. You can. you can have that experience for the first time again mm -hmm. on your wedding night, and you deserve it. That is the way God wanted it to be. Right. So I just want to I want to no, say really I good. hope that is helping really, really a little good. bit. And I think for some of you, you know, because of the the where the world in which we live mm -hmm. and how there's become a culture of promiscuity is okay. I just want to say this. God wants you to wait until you're married mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. clearly and not because he doesn't want you to have fun. It's because yeah. of what you said, the beauty that he has in relationship in covenant and in marriage. I don't have to wonder anything about mm -hmm. Dana. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to wonder how I compare what she's experienced. Yeah. You know, what has she done? Am I okay? Am I enough? We don't wonder any of those mm -hmm. things. Right. And so when you look at the beauty of what God has built and then you now, okay, so now present, let's just say that you have fallen and you've, you've done a lot of things in your life. And I love what you said. God is the God of restoration. Right. Ask him to purify you, to bring you yeah. back to that place so of wholeness. Good. And then now you're making a decision that you're going to live differently. And then you, you ask the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. Right. You have to set a different track for the way in which maybe you've lived in the past, you have to say, this, this is what God has for me. And it's beautiful and it's worth waiting for. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It, it, even it's though true. you want it, even though it may feel good, it's, it's everything that God has in his timing is worth waiting for mm -hmm. because it's actually better. Yeah. And it's, I think it's bringing you, it's bringing you together. God designed sex f to bring husband and yes, wife together yes, to be yes, one. Right. Yes, and if yes. we do that outside of marriage, it, it, we, we are now, 
being brought together. I mean, I just know couples that that have sex as they are dating, mm-hmm. and everyone know you should not be together. You are unhealthy for one, not because right. of the sex, but because of the sex. Right. They just they are connected, and it's harder for them to break yeah. up mm-hmm. because God designed this as something right. to bind you right. yeah. together right. with. Yeah. You will become That's right. one. That's so good. So it's it's just a great thing, and and God's plan. So every time the Bible talks about, um, you know, sex outside of marriage it's wrong even if you're like well we're getting married next week yeah just wait a week <laughs> Listen, <laughs> just, just wait we know we're getting married yeah, but then just wait just yeah. practice patience yeah. and wait and you will not regret it you no, will not so regret good. it well let's go into the last okay. question in the last few minutes and it says my spouse um, has gained a lot of weight it is not that i don't love them but some attraction has been lost and has made sex difficult These please these are real questions help mm-hmm. dana <laughs> <laughs> he's kicking that <laughs> graciously to you dana thank you i have gotten pudgy <laughs> <laughs> how are you dealing with it? How are yeah. you dealing <laughs> with it? <laughs> my, i wrote the question <laughs> no uh that's such a good question um, I think it's a very real question. It's a very real question. Yeah. And I would just encourage people if there's anything in your life that is keeping you from relationship with your spouse, regardless, you have to begin to have open and honest communication. And um, this just happens to be one example, but this is like one example of probably many that you yes. can think of in your mind yeah. that maybe it's just not you're overweight. Now I'm not attracted. It could be the mood in which you come home in. Mm -hmm. It could be the way that you leave everything around the house. It could be your emotions are up here and then they're down here. There's so many different things that it could be the way that you spend money, the way that you expect me to go and do these things. There's so many things that, that could cause you to lose attraction. Yeah. Right. And so at the bottom of the barrel at the end of the day it's about communication and so if that is something that's weight is obviously a touchy subject it is. but yeah. when you're married i think you can't come at somebody you have to begin to pose questions mm-hmm. and come at hey how, what can i do to help i noticed that maybe you're not feeling as well is there something that i could do to help you yeah and instead of going my gosh, you've gained a lot of weight. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a, different a it's, approach. it's a health thing. That's more really than anything good. Else. Yeah. Because I think what you're doing there is you're also compassion compels yeah. you yes. in a different way. I care right. about you and yes. this is not healthy. No. I mean, for, for you, yes. you know, let's do something together. Ste- Stefan and I have, yeah. ha- we have done that sometimes. Let's, let's just focus on this together. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's work out. Let's be, do this diet. Let's do right. something together. Right. Then it's more fun because then you're focusing together on health as well. Yeah. I think let's just, I want to, I want to transition a little bit into just the culture in which we've lived and TV movies, pornography has led us to an image of what we think our spouse should be yeah, and that somehow that attracts us. So I just want to bring this back on me as an individual looking at my wife and saying, oh, well, she's gained weight or vice versa. And because of that, I'm not attracted. I think that then comes back on me right. as what has, what have I been putting in front of me that has caused me to be attracted to something and identifying that it's actually not real. Mm-hmm. Pornography, movies, TV, magazines, none of those things are real. Those are not real people that I'm having intimate relationship with. And so then I need to ask another question is that as I am strictly attracted to what I see, because there is so much more that God wants to mm-hmm. bring in me on attraction. Mm-hmm. And I have to invest in that because mm-hmm. relationship is way more than just a physical attraction, but we can be programmed that it's only physical. Yeah. And, and so I have to start addressing that Lord. I've, I've put things in front of me. And by the way, that is idolatry. Mm -hmm. I have been lusting after images Mm -hmm. of what I think something should be. And that is not real. That's good. Cause we are real people. Yeah. Real people 
put on weight. Mm -hmm. Real people have bad days and good days. Mm -hmm. And covenant says, I'm still going to pursue regardless of how I feel. And I'm going to lean into the imperfections of life Mm -hmm. because magazines aren't real. The girl in the porn that's saying she wants me is not real. That's not real. And by the way, if you met her, she probably wouldn't even want to talk to you, right? Like I think- And she's probably really hurt. And and the problem with all of this- Yeah. Is is it, it's painted this picture of attraction that yeah. is now wrong, yeah. and I'm now projecting that on my spouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. No, it's it's really good. So the mind is important. So listen, as we yeah. conclude episode so one good. of two episodes of Q and A, I just. I just want to say a couple of things, especially if you're in a context of a group, is I would, oh, sorry, just banged everybody here on my knees. <laughs> They're just long, you know. <laughs> um, to say this in the context of a group or, or someone that you're going to be accountable with mm-hmm. is I think it's important for all of you to have a conversation about what are the weak areas that you struggle right. in and then, and then share the victories. Right. Share what it is that you've 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 done to help, so that someone in the group or someone that you're sitting with can can feel encouraged yes. that there is hope to change. And yes. speaking of groups, we have I know personally of at least seven, maybe eight marriage small groups that so we have. Good. Yeah, so you can join today. You can join today if yeah. if you have more. Like, don't work on this alone. But no. there are other people that yeah. will speak yeah. into your life. Yes. So join, join. Don't do it yes. alone. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think in conclusion, I just, I want to pray for you, but the questions that you're asking yourself, okay, who am I accountable to? And, and then what, what about God's word am I applying that needs mm-hmm. to, what, what about my mind do I need to change with yes. God's word to so help good. me see things better? And I think if we just always keep asking that, applying God's word, mm-hmm. applying God's word, how do I rearrange my mind to think the way God intended me to think? So good. Because we're called to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. called to be yes. together. Yeah. And so let me just pray for you here mm-hmm. in closing. Father, I thank you that you are the God who restores. Yes. You are. You're the God that blesses and encourages us because you have beautiful for us. And so, Lord, we set our mind on you. And I pray for everyone today that is listening that, Lord, you would encourage them. Mm -hmm. You'd put them in a group of people that they would be connected with, God, to see the beauty of all that you have for them Mm -hmm. in their covenant Mm -hmm. relationship, in their marriage, in their life, in their community. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. And we're so glad. Please like, share, and let everyone know uh, about this podcast so they too can be encouraged because we believe that God has great things ahead for every one of you. We do. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you.